If you've been watching, you know we just flew eight hours in British Airways business class. It's our first double-decker plane. We're super excited. We'll probably tell you about the points and stuff we used to book that British Airways flight and how you could do it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, we had a seven hour, 45 minute flight. It was better than I thought it would be when we first started. We had a little delay before we took off, but no big deal. What did you think? Um, I love the privacy screen. I think it would be weird if it was just a stranger and, and not somebody that we knew because you stare at each other during takeoff and landing. It was cool the way the TV popped out. Hey, does this come out? Yeah. <gasps> Whoa. I liked that the tray slid back and forth. The part for my feet seemed like it was broken, and then a couple of the storage areas, the clicker parts didn't really work. My headphones didn't quite work the whole time. I had to use a pillow and then push it in. The headphones, when they did work, were really good, really loud, noise canceling. Overall, for the seats and beds, we give it a three out of five. One thing that kind of bothered me was the way that the seats were designed. A person would have to step over your feet if you were sleeping to get out and go to the restaurant. And we thought that was weird. We were really fortunate because I would have had to walk over someone and someone would have walked over Steven. But because there was no one sitting in the seat where I would walk over, I didn't have that problem. And then the guy behind me, he didn't move. He never went to the bathroom or anything, so. So it didn't happen with us. Yeah. But uh, it's just one of the things, if you're going to take the British Airways business class, just know that if it's full, you may have someone stepping over you to try to use the bathroom. Or you may have to step over someone. <laughs> we didn't get to use the stairs. The stairs, I guess, are more for the staff to get up and down. We thought we would have a chance to use them. But anyway, it's, it's not a big deal. It was just like one of those cool things you, you want to do, so. We're rating the plane layout and perks. Three out of five. The food. I had broccoli soup for starters, and it was delicious. The food by far was better than most food that we get on airplanes. The cod was delicious. The small cod rice and broccoli that I had, it was light. You don't want anything heavy on those flights because you gotta sit there for eight hours, seven hours. I did, I had a creamy vegetarian pasta with tomato seared tomatoes. It was really, really good. It was a little heavier with the cream, but it was delicious. Yeah, it was amazing. It had a lot of flavor, it was unique, it had different layers, like the food was really great. They brought us a drink with dinner and a welcome champagne when we got on board. Hilarious, they often ask us multiple times, like, would you like another drink? Can we get you some wine? And I think maybe on British Airways you need to ask for it, because I don't think they would have said no, um, but they just didn't ask as much. They did ask if we wanted to be woken up for breakfast or if we wanted to sleep, and I thought that was nice. Overall, we're rating the food and drinks four and a half out of five. They were really good. Most of the flight, because we flew at night, the cabin wasn't lit. So if you want to get around and do things, it's going to be a little difficult because it's really dark. They walk around with flashlights so they don't bother people. The crew does. That's a little different because I like to stay up. But they wouldn't let us open the windows, so I couldn't open my windows because the light might bother other people. Even though they gave us huge, amazing eye masks in the kits, right? You liked your... Yeah, the eye mask is the biggest and you go across this big old head, like it was amazing. Yeah, and the staff was very nice. Well, it was always there when we needed something. The bathrooms, the bathrooms were huge on this flight. You had a toilet and a place to sit. For the bathroom and amenity kit, we give it a four and a half out of five. All right, we will see you at the arrivals lounge. As soon as we landed, we knew we were going to get to do this arrival lounge. Our first arrival lounge ever, and it was British Airways. We had to go to a different terminal, but the little train things made it really easy, and it was, it was great. Now the arrivals lounge is different because you have to fly Club World. So if you're flying from Europe to the UK, you don't get the arrivals lounge. But since we flew from the States, then we got to go in there, and it's a very nice lounge. Lots of different 
different CD, so that looks good. It's beautiful, different colors of glass, blue, purple, some big, huge flower arrangements. Uh, food choices were pretty good. There was lots of different types of coffee, which we needed because we're getting tired. Sandwiches, champagne, ice cream, washrooms. Hydrotherapy, we didn't even go into hydrotherapy. I didn't know that was a thing, I missed that. Yeah. I would have gone. <laughs> they had a whole British breakfast buffet. A whole British breakfast buffet. Say that four times fast. Because they're open for just people that fly in early. So they're closing in about 10 minutes at 2 o'clock. Because that's the time people can go check into their hotels, which is what we're going to do. Walk to Terminal 4, check into our hotel. So it's just kind of a, if you fly in too early from wherever you're flying from, a chance to, I don't know, be comfortable, yeah, yeah, refresh, have some snacks and things for free before you move on for the rest of your day. For the rating of the check-in, the Tipperary British Airways Lounge in Chicago and the Arrivals Lounge, 3.8 out of 5. But overall, I thought it was great. I really thought it was a uh, good value. It was comfortable. The movie selection was really good. Overall, for this British Airways business class, we give it a 3.8 out of 5. But we're going to head to our hotel. We'll see you guys in the room. We'll probably tell you about the points and stuff we use to book that British Airways flight and how you can do it too. Sounds good. See you soon. a chair instead of a sofa it's obviously a little small because it's in the terminal so suitcase can't fit in the closet we are exhausted but we're here we do not have to leave this building to sleep to go to the restaurant to do anything until tomorrow at 2 p.m then we're gonna take some trains and get to our next house sit but for the next 23 hours we don't even have to worry about it so watch some TV, maybe do some editing, all that after a nap. All right, we'll catch up with you later. Okay, so how do we do this? Sometimes when you're traveling, you gotta get a little creative. We had made plans to come back to London last year, and early this year, we made plans to be in Salt Lake City. Couldn't find a flight going from Salt Lake City to London with the points that we had. So we found a flight out of Chicago to London for 61,000 points each, times two, for each of us through Cathay Pacific business class. The flight was then operated by British Airways. So 122,000 points, for which turned out to be a $10,980 flight. So from Amex, we sent 100,000 points to Cathay Pacific and paid $386 in taxes and fees. So the overall price came out to $21,484. Plus we got a 20% bonus so we only transferred 100,000 points and got 122,000 points on Cathay Pacific. So now we have a flight from Chicago to London. The problem is we needed a flight to go from Salt Lake City to Chicago. For that, we paid 15,000 points each. The tickets wind up being worth $846. Well, the Hilton Hotel we stayed in last night was 30,000 points for $179 a night. Our total travel costs were 22,000 $519. For that, we redeemed 182,000 points. So $22,519 divided by 160,000 points turns out to be $14 per point. We only spent $386 out of pocket. So that's the way you can travel for cheap to get around the world. All right, that's how we did it. We hope you guys keep traveling and keep watching. So we're glad you could join us for this travel day, getting over to London. Uh, for those of you that are new here, I'm Steven. This is my wife, Elaine. And as always, we like to wish you safe and enjoyable travels. See, See you, you later. Time.
so it's open till two for you to take a shower, kind of get rejuvenated before you have to go either to a meeting or to your hotel. To shower? That's what I thought the hydrotherapy was. Uh, I thought hydrotherapy. I thought it was massage. Anyway, whatever. Okay. Yeah. So we. We're we just, not sure. We're not sure. We didn't do it, so we probably shouldn't mention it. <laughs> Be free.